Hello and welcome to this short instruction video on the cone penetration test. This video is part of a series of introductory videos on soil testing produced by the section of geoengineering at Delft University of Technology. This video is meant to provide an insight in the CBT experiment as performed in several courses at the TU Delft. This video contains two parts. The first part covers a theoretical introduction, followed by a video instruction of the execution of the CPT practical. But first, let's start by discussing the use of the cone penetration test. The CPT is performed at almost every building site here in the Netherlands for determining the geotechnical properties of soft soils. The test was initially developed here in Delft by the Dutch Laboratory for Soil Mechanics. It's a cheap test while accurately gaining an impression of the site's soil properties and especially the layering. The test is very appropriate in here in the Netherlands due to the soft soil characteristics. The figure shows an advanced CPT machine as used on building sites. During our experiment, we were using a simpler apparatus, which will be elaborated upon in the next few slides. Next to the standard CPT cone, extra measurements can be done. Examples are measuring pore water pressure or magnetism. The detection of magnetism is especially useful to detect the presence of metal objects. For example, undetonated bombs from World War II. This figure shows a schematic of the device that will be used during the CPT experiments at the TU Delft. The device is made by TU Delft and essentially it's a simplified machine designed so that the student can see what is happening. Let's run through the most important components together. In a CPT, a cone is placed in the holder and is then pushed into the soil at a constant rate of about 20 mm per second, in this case by turning the crank. The CPT is connected to a transmitter via a wire. The cone is measuring soil properties over the depth covered, which are sent via a wireless signal to nearby laptops, where the signal can be interpreted. Let us take a close look at the measuring cone. As explained, the cone is pushed into the ground by the apparatus. Several probe tubes can be used to extend the measuring device. The wire connecting the CPT cone and the transmitter is run along the entire length of the probe tubes. Also, one will find a steel locking plate. This can be placed under the broader parts of the probe tubes to ensure that the probing tubes do not fall into the hole during the experiment. The cone measures two parameters. At the tip, cone resistance is measured in megapascals. On the sleeve of the cone, sleeve friction resistance is measured, also in megapascals. Using these two parameters, the so-called friction ratio of the soil can be calculated by dividing the two. The friction ratio proves to be very useful in determining the soil type, as will be explained in the following slide. Let's take a quick look at an example of possible measurements from a CPT experiment. On the left, the results from a CPT can be seen, where the cone resistance, sleeve resistance and the subsequent friction ratio are plotted over the depth. The red lines indicate the different boundaries between soil layers. Note how each soil layer has its own characteristic average friction ratio. The combination of the friction ratio and cone resistance is used to identify layers and the soil type per layer. This can be done using the Robertson graph. Based on the numbers in the chart, the corresponding soil type can be determined. Finally, the soil type can be used to plot the soil over the depth. Now that we have discussed the basics behind the cone penetration test, we can take a look at the different steps to be conducted during the practical. This figure shows the CPT device in working condition. Compare this image to the sketch shown earlier in this video and see whether you recognize all the components. The way to set up the device is thoroughly described in the manual, but we will quickly run through the basics here. The device is placed on the ground. Make sure that the device is level. Use wooden planks to increase the elevation of the four corners if necessary. The wooden beams are used in combination with two blocks to increase the stability of the CPT device. The probe tubes, including the CPT cones, are placed in the cart on the left. The orange wire connects a cone with a transmitter, which in turn sends the signal towards the laptop. The laptops can be seen in the back. The crank powers the push device. The push device is made up of the gearbox and the rod holder. Using the handle, the probe tubes can be pushed into the soil. After a tube reaches nearly the ground level, another rod must be inserted. To do this, the rod, the rod holder has to be raised to an upper position before the next tube is placed in the holder. The following clips will show how this is done. The first step is making sure the first rod with the cone can be pushed into the soil. The rod holder is placed 10 cm below the highest position by turning the handle. Make sure the rod holder is closed. Place the cone through the opening in the rubber plate and make sure the data cable is in the right position. Watch this carefully since the cable is vulnerable to damage. Now we are ready to perform the test. The measurement can be started on the laptop and we can begin turning the crank. The cone has to travel at a constant speed of about 20 mm per second. Therefore, the device equipped with indicator lamps providing feedback about the speed. Make sure the green light is on while measuring. 
Red on either lamp means too slow or too fast. When the tube holder is about 10 cm above the ground, a new rod will have to be installed. The holder is opened and turned upward again until 10 cm below the top. A new rod can be screwed on the old one and the process can be repeated. Be careful of the data cable. When a desired depth is reached, the measurement can be stopped on the laptop. Now we will start removing the rods and clean them. Make sure the measuring box is turned off first. To remove the rods, the rod holder will have to be opened, lowered over the broader part of the rod and then closed again. Place the steel locking plate below the broader part to make sure the cone doesn't fall into the hole. Turn the crank to hoist the rod out of the soil until the next rod is at about 10 cm above the ground plate. Next the rod can be removed and the process can be repeated. During the process the rods will have to be cleaned. This is a handy method. Don't forget to clean the cable as well. When the cone tip is out of the soil, we can take a look at our measurement. This is explained in chapter 1 of this video. Additionally to a CPT experiment, boring samples can be used to validate the CPT results. In the last part of this video, this will be briefly explained. The soil boring can be used to visually identify soil layers. An example of a boring can be seen on the picture. This soil boring is the taken in Delft close to the location of the CPT practical. Also see the results from the CPT experiment from early in this video. We will now try to make a comparison between the soil boring and the CPT results on the right. From the CPT results on the right, we can see that the subsoil in Delft predominantly consists of clay and silt. The higher parts of the soil show not a lot of consistency in the soil type. It is therefore not possible to make a concise distinction on the type of soil for this part of the ground. A question that the student could ask himself is, why is there a lot of variation in this part of the soil? Below that, it can be seen that through a series of three separate layers that the silt content of the soil increases. These three layers can be distinguished in the soil mostly by color. Further below, it can be seen that the soil becomes more sandy as we continue further downward. This is confirmed by our soil boring. And this wraps up the content for this video on the cone penetration test. Make sure to watch the other instruction videos as well. On behalf of the section of Geoengineering at Delft University of Technology, we'd like to thank you for paying attention to this video. We wish you good luck with your studies.